I'm Brent. Today we're going to talk about a pretty reliable package from a performance car point of view and it's a Mitsubishi Evo 8. So here in Australia these cars were sold as mainly private import vehicles. Mitsubishi Australia did bring in a range of them but what we're going to talk about in the next couple of minutes is about the importance of getting the car tuned to suit local fuel and what power and performance upgrades are available to it because it's been a while since I've done a video but these cars are still a steady popular car from a performance improvement point of view and they're very, getting very, very affordable from a car that you consider to buy. So let's just quickly talk about it first. This is the MR model, so it's a JDM model. It's the last of the Evo 8s before they went to an Evo 9. So it's effectively an Evo 9 with an Evo 8 body on it and it doesn't have the variable cam heads. So when Mitsubishi started the production moving into the Evo 9, um, the Evo 8 got just about everything that you would expect out of an Evo 9, but of course it doesn't have variable cam heads. It's got the six-speed transmission. It's got the um, same turbo package, similar exhaust system. Of course, a few things are a little bit different in shape because they did change the body and a few other small things inside. So let's just talk about the car overall from an Australian point of view. And this is pretty typical of the worldwide um, use of this model because being a JDM, Japanese domestic model car, in Japan these cars are tuned for 100 octane fuel and most of the markets around the world don't have 100 octane fuel and in Australia we certainly don't. So when you bring this car to Australia um, and you run it on 98 octane fuel, the ECU only has a limited amount of ability to adjust itself to, co to protect the engine from excessive uh, knocking due to the, the uh, ignition control map that the car is designed to run with 100 octane fuel and of course what it then dumps in is a whole heap of extra fuel as well to try and richen up the mixture and reduce the uh, risk of engine damage which ultimately manifests itself into damage cracked pistons, uh, big end bearings and things like that. So what else can you do to this car and why should you do it? Well one of the first things you should certainly do is get the car custom tuned to suit 98 octane fuel because it'll do two things. It'll make the car a lot more reliable and it'll also make the car a lot more quicker and more um, fun to drive. But the other supplementary advantage is it'll actually make it more fuel efficient because you're not relying on the ECU to dump a heap of um, compensated adjustments to uh, take into account the fact that you're effectively putting the wrong fuel in the car. So let's just have a look at the engine bay from a performance point of view and you'll see this car is relatively standard. It's got a standard airbox. It's actually got the wrong size battery in it because this model car is supposed to have a bigger battery. Someone interestingly has put the wrong battery in it. Um, we've got the turbo on this side, the inlet manifold on this side, the crossover pipe that goes down into the front mount intercooler which sits in front of the radiator on this model. It's down in behind here. And from a four-wheel drive performance car, absolutely fun car to have. We used to have an Evo 9 R&D vehicle. It was probably one of my most favourite cars from a drivability point of view and it was a really good package from a performance point of view to build upon and these cars are certainly that. So let's just talk about some facts and I'll, I'll scan this um, rough dyno graph and we'll put it with this video in a minute. So when the car come in, and we'll just show on the graph, you can see the initial dyno run, it's got a really squiggly line on, on the torque and also squiggly on the power. Now that's a good indication that the engine is not in a happy state. It indicates that things are not running as good as what it should and it also indicates that it's not the best way to continue to drive the car. So this particular client came in um, for a service um, that was way overdue um, from a timing belt point of view because we're talking about a car that's now well and truly over 10 years old. And then of course he asked us to check it from a reliability from a performance engine ECU point of view. So what we've done is we've put it on the dyno, we've custom tuned it, but interestingly because of the age of this particular car and typical of these models is the fuel pump is now got a bit lazy due to time and we can only deliver a modest increase in power and performance nothing like what we know we can deliver from a from a normal point of view and this car has increased its performance here but we could actually deliver a lot more if we had have put a replacement high performance fuel pump in it because now that we are tuning the car for its best reliable output the fuel pump factory wise is just not delivering enough fuel and if we continue to chase more power that the engine can reliably deliver and the injectors can reliably deliver enough fuel, they're commanding more fuel from the fuel pump, but the fuel pump can't deliver it. So of course that pegs the upper level of power that we can deliver the car because we continue to run more boost and chase 
um, the matching fuel mixtures, the engine will run lean because the fuel pump can't supply the injectors and of course the end result is a package of parts and performance which is just not reliable. So we've delivered, we're going to deliver this car with a, a lower power figure than what the client um, ultimately, uh, well not what the client expected, we expect to be able to deliver more but given the limited budget of the owner, he's decided to do the fuel pump later because he spent a fair bit of money getting the car reliable. So let's just um, talk about other things. The fuel pump is accessed inside the car from underneath the back seat on the passenger side. There's an access point that you can pull that out and then you can get through to the top of the tank and you can pull the factory fuel pump out. If I've got a picture, I'll load that to this video as well to help you understand. But from a summary point of view, the most important thing that I want to really harp on is, is if you do have a JDM domestic model uh, Japanese import car, no matter where you are in the world, from the best of my knowledge, they are supposed to run everywhere on 100 octane fuel. If you haven't retuned it, if you're in the Caribbean, if you're in Europe, or if you're in Australia, make sure you take it to a reliable workshop who knows what they're doing. They've got access to the factory ECU, such as we do, to retune it using good, reliable software. Get it retuned to suit your local fuel. If you've got 98, that's great. If you can only get 96, then obviously you need to use that as the basis of your tuning upgrade as well. And you'll still get a car that goes incredibly good and is also reliable. So there you have it, Mitsubishi Evo 8 MR, JDM model here in Australia. For more technical info on the Mitsubishi range of cars, you can go to our website, go to the top of the menu, put in the year, make and model, and you'll find a whole heap of uh, models of parts that we can supply you. But of course, share this video um, on this channel and let us know what you think. But follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Check out our Facebook page and we'll keep you updated. But for now, I'm Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.